massage, right? We want, as much as it is emotionally rooted, we want to be able to uproot that and get it out of your system. Hello, we are back for part three of Creative Prayer. It is Justina with Soulfully Align You, Inner Healing and Business Consulting. So I'm so grateful to be here. This um, series on Creative Prayer has just been so cool. As I do this and work through this with you all, it just encourages my faith. It just solidifies um, the things that I have been taught and learned. Um, through my mentors, um, Sarah Thiessen and um, Tiffany and Heather. And I just love all those beautiful ladies. They have spent 20 years um, de developing this protocol of Splunkna. And I've just been so blessed to have them as mentors. And um, yes, it's, it's truly been a blessing. And I'm just so grateful for the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful for um, the Inner Healing School and learning um, deeper inner healing principles and how God has just um, led me to creating an additional modality, which is called the Soul Aligned Method. I have certified coaches in that modality and um, it's just been beautiful. I watched those coaches do go on to do amazing and beautiful work. We have the self-study version of the Soul Aligned Method and we also will be doing a live round coming up soon in the end of September. So it is a weekend training, just three day, a three day training where you get to learn the Soul Aligned Method. And then you also get to um, join our 16 week training where you get to be in there. There are pre-recorded videos. And if you watch one each week, it would be done in four months. So pretty cool stuff. You would get a double certification as a Christian mindset coach and a Soul Aligned practitioner. So I, I love it. You can go through Splunkna, you can go through the Soul Aligned Method, Soul Aligned Method, which everyone suits your spirit and your heart. And I will link, have links in the show notes, um, the description for all of that stuff. So fun stuff. I love to give credit where credit is due. And again, Sarah Thiessen from the Splunkna Therapy Institute. She also has a beautiful book. I will link that. It is called, um, Splunkna Therapy, I believe it's called Redeeming Energy Psychology for the Kingdom of God. Beautiful, beautiful book. And then I like my book too, Mindset to Manifest Your Soulful Business. So the beauty of me being a brand strategist is that I get to incorporate soul work into the work that I do. Absolutely love it. I think that Splunkna is just so beautiful to really get to the root of limiting beliefs, to help you to get rid of any sort of subconscious programming that is causing you to procrastinate, that is causing you to um, operate in perfectionism, that is causing you to self-sabotage, right? We want, as much as it is emotionally rooted, we want to be able to uproot that and get it out of your system. So many of you here, you probably already have a bunch of strategy. You've probably already hired all the business coaches and you definitely want to start looking at it through a mindset lens. But I always say mindset work is a little different than soul work. Soul work is getting to the root of the things. So with that said, we are getting into creative prayer. And before I get into creative prayer, I want to tell you a little bit about me. My name is Justina Ford. I am a celebrity makeup artist. I'm a true entrepreneur. I came into the industry as a freelance makeup artist. I had no clue, no connections, didn't know anybody. And I actually started internationally overseas in South Korea. So I was volunteering in the, um, the theaters there in Korea. And then eventually they said, Hey, we've got a budget. We want to pay you. And I was like, what? I can get paid for this. So I started my business in South Korea. Then I, being a military spouse, you know, you got to bounce around, move around all of that. And I had to restart all over again with no context, not knowing anybody in North Carolina. So I just know I'm just so blessed that God has just given me 
um, divine strategy. He, I remember like having all the strategies, having done all the things, tried my best. And I got to a place where I just cried. I was like, God, I've done everything I can get to. I don't know what else to do to get this business moving and shifting and all of that. And I had to lean in on the Holy Spirit of who do I need to be connected with? Who do I need to communicate with? Who do I need to speak with? Can you make those divine connections for me, Lord? And he did. And now I can say that my company has worked on political campaigns. We have worked with prominent figures in the community. We have done um, commercials. We have done TV, commer TV's commercials. Um, Let's, let's drop a few names, Lifetime, BET, all of that. And we are just so blessed to say that we have that in our repertoire and that we've been able to do that and partner with other artists and represent other artists and bring them into the industry and help to uplift their careers as well. And I will tell you, part of the mindset of being able to move through this industry and to show up as a leader in my business has definitely attributed to the soul work that I'm doing with the Splunk Therapy Institute, as well as the community that I'm a part of called Girl Power Alliance. So if you want more information about Girl Power Alliance, I'll definitely drop it in the discussion notes and more information about Splunk Therapy Institute, I will drop it in the show notes as well. So on to Creative Prayer we go. So we last, in part two, we talked about faith, right? God has a name for the combination of imagination and honest expectation, and that is faith, okay? And if you're just popping in on the third um, section, when we're talking about imagination, we're, that is what creative prayer is, us tapping into our imaginations and beginning to imagine what it would be like if these particular prayers are being answered, right? And answered through knowing who God is, his character, his decrees, his promises, all of that. And for example, say that we are breaking agreement with um, unworthiness, right? God, if I walked in knowing that I'm worthy because of you, that I'm worthy because of who you called me to be, how would I show up? Can you imagine how you would show up if you operated knowing that you're worthy? Think, think about that and pray through that, right? God, I just thank you so much for the fact that I'm worthy because of who you are. It's not anything that I have done. I am worthy because I'm your daughter. I am I'm capable to take these actions and move forward in my business because you give me strength and you give me divine strategy. I may not know which way to go, but you know which way to go. I may not know what step to take, but you know what step to take. And God, I just lean in on that, knowing that you're going to reveal your divine strategy to me. Look at that, y'all. I just stepped into my little imagine, uh, my little creative prayer, right? <laughs> just an example of creative prayer. Now we're going to discuss it in the Bible in Matthew 8. When Jesus had encountered Ka Capernaum, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? No, I just have to pray. I know, I mean, I have to break on that because the first thing that comes to Jesus' mind is attending to the needs of the people that come to him. And if you're an entrepreneur, you like to solve people's problems. You want to answer the needs of the people in your industry, the people, the needs of the people in your niche, pay attention, talk to your people, listen to your people, hear what their needs are within your niche. Um, the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go and he goes. And that one, come and he comes. I say to my servant, servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. So can y'all see how this man was using his honest expectation and his imagination in his mind? He imagined if God just, if Jesus just speaks the word, right? If he just tells me what to do, I know 
that this man will be healed. I believe it. I can see it. Sometimes that seeing in your mind is that that's part of that imagination also, right? Can you see in your mind how your situation will shift and change when you invite Jesus into it, when you co-partner with God, when you get in his word? Can you imagine, can you see when God's grace and mercy is applied, when the forgiveness is applied, how your situation can shift and how it can change? Mm -mm -mm. So beautiful. So that was, and I'm telling you, him just believing that if Jesus were to say a word, just say a word, you can stay right where you at, Jesus, just say a word. You don't even have to come under my roof. Just say the word and I know and I believe and have expect an honest expectation and I can see it already working. I can see this man already healed because I have faith in you. Apply that to yourself, right? Apply that to your situation. Um, the other piece we're going to look at is gratefulness. This is another aspect of creative prayer. And I'm going to read this paragraph. This is directly from Sarah Thiessen, who is so amazing. And when I tell you, like, again, the protocol that they have created through Splunkna therapy, like, it is fear, a fiercely biblical protocol. Because let me tell y'all, this idea of imagination can get twisted really quick. It can be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It can be twisted. It can be a little bit deformed, right? If we're not careful with it. And there's another word I'm looking for. I can't find it, but it's okay. So since most of us are just starting out and developing true faith, we have to start somewhere. The best place to start is in moving our muscles and then offering our gratefulness, whether we see the effects on our prayers or not. Did y'all hear that? How many? God, I feel it. <laughs> Look, this is for me just as much as it is for y'all. How many of y'all praying for stuff and it ain't clicking? But you, you've got, we've got to offer our gratefulness, whether we see our effects or not. Offering our gratefulness and our thanksgiving to God is one of the most potent forms of heart's intention on an energetic level. That's part of why he asked us throughout scripture to thank him. I remember um, I was like, I was, when I was early in my faith, I would always say, um, what would I say? I'd be like, God, what is your will for me? What is your will for me? I just want to know your will. I just want to know your will. What I really want to know is like my personal like will, like what's the thing I need to be doing? And um, I remember coming across a scripture and it was like, and ev an everything give thanks and this is the will of God. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? It's that? And everything give thanks. And this is what Sarah's talking about right here. And everything give thanks. Um, what is she saying? An important clarification on gratefulness, however, is that while we end a creative prayer thanking God, we are not thanking him that the job is done in a charismatic sense, right? That name it and claim it situation. This gratefulness is not manipulative. As if to say my thanks obligates God to do what I've asked. Y'all, that is a heart posture. Our gratefulness, our thanks is not to, mani not to manipulate or obligate God to do what we've asked him to do. There's nothing faithful about pretending something is done when it's not. My daughter, her foot has been swollen for over a year now. And we have been praying for that. We've been praying for her foot. We've been going to doctor after doctor. And at the end of that prayer, we're thanking God for receiving our prayer, right? Thanking God that he is hearing our prayers because when we open our eyes and we look at our foot and it's still swollen, what good does that, does that do for that child to pretend that, oh, it's done in Jesus' name and he's obligated to do it. And then she's looking, that, that child knows, she sees, she feels that it's not done yet. It's not done yet, right? But God is still doing something in the mix. We don't know what it is, but we believe he's doing something 
And that's the piece that um, we really stand on. So God is not moved by my claiming and lying. Okay, he's not moved my, by my claiming it. And no, we should know this too, lying is energetically destructive. But we can trust and assume that he has done something with our offering of faithful bandwidth. That he has used our partnership to move at least incrementally toward his goals, right? What is his goal? And this idea of the foot with it being swollen. And every time we come to him and we pray, is he building a relationship with my daughter, building trust in us, building faith in us? There's something that he wants out of this toward his goal. We can thank him for whatever that incremental work is. And as we continue to do that, our faith develops and more can be accomplished through each prayer. Now that is huge. As you're praying for your business, and you're praying for your finances to increase and you may not be seeing it yet, you can say, thank you, God, because I know you're doing a work. Maybe there's a work you're doing in my heart. There's something in your goal, in your will that is taking place. There's a goal that God has in your situation that you may not be able to see. Now, let me tell you this. Sometimes for me, <laughs> Sometimes it takes six months later, a year later, where I'm like, oh God, that's what you were doing in that situation. Okay. And if you go to my podcast episode, I think it's like episode 63, 64, where I'm doing that series on Psalms. Y'all, I'm telling y'all about some stuff God revealed to me back in December of 2022. And it's August of December 23, and I am now seeing what he was doing, what he was trying to do, okay? So that's why it's so good for us to be in relationship with the Lord, because when we're in relationship and we're close with him, those revelations can happen sooner, okay? I will tell you, I fell off this year. I was just like, I got an attitude. I'm upset, all the things. And then he just drew me back in. Y'all remember I told you about that community, uh, Girl Power Alliance, right? Being in that community with those women, they just have drawn me back in. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna pay attention. I'm gonna get in your word, right? We have a um, six week challenge going on right now which is the kingdom way challenge. We have a four day leadership and legacy challenge that's going on all through this community. And it's so, so good because it's just drawing us closer into the father. This community is based on personal development, professional development, um, spiritual development. We just love it. And in the show notes, I will um, make sure I put in a 24 hour sneak peek for you so you can check it out. So yes, this is it, y'all. Thank y'all for watching the three, watching and listening, because we're putting this in both places, on YouTube and the podcast. And um, thank y'all for watching the three-part series on creative prayer. And all of this was written by the Splunkna Therapy Institute. And I just added my flair to it, okay? Miss Sarah Thiessen is amazing. She equips us with this type of knowledge, this type of understanding, this type of expectation of um, believing that God is doing the work, right? That he is doing the healing, that he is partnering with us to do the healing. We're so blessed to be able to co-partner with the Holy Spirit right and walk our clients step by step by step through this protocol of Splunkna to help them experience greater freedom right greater freedom in all areas of life be it your marriage your parenting <laughs> your career your calling physical physical illnesses we have people that have experienced Splunkna and they have experienced physical healing as well and we're just so grateful for I'm so grateful for this protocol and I know the women and families and children and men that we've worked with are absolutely grateful for this protocol too. So, all right, have a wonderful day. Bye.